The biggest AI delivery vehicle in Microsoft is Office 365. With a total of 150 million monthly active users, it's really a key part of everyday AI you know, we are working on. So I'm going to invite my colleague uh, Rob to come up to show you some cool features, you know, what do we do with AI in Office. Rob? Thank you, Harry. Hi, everybody. I'm Rob Howard. I work in the Office product marketing team, and I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about the AI-powered tools we're adding to Office to help people do their best work. Now, the truth is, we've actually used AI in Office for many years. You can think of features like spell check and flash fill and recommended charts that are a standard part of the Office you know and love. But with the advent of Office 365, when we took the cloud and deeply integrated it with all the apps across Office, it really accelerated our progress in AI. And as Office 365 has grown, it's become one of our biggest vehicles for delivering Microsoft AI technology to real people and helping them get real value out of it. You'll see how we're using that world data, user data, and especially work data to help save people time, to help them focus on the things that matter most to them, uh, even help them be better writers and unlock hidden insights in their data. I'm gonna start off by showing you four of my favorite AI-powered features in Office. Uh, these are features that I use every day, and you may have seen some of them, but like any good AI, they've gotten better as more and more people have used them, and I wanna share with you the latest. And then I'm gonna show you four new ways we're bringing AI into Office in the coming months. So let's get started here in the latest version of PowerPoint, available as part of my Office 365 subscription. I'm working on a presentation for the Contoso Mark 8 quadcopter. And uh, I, I uh, will tell you, I've spent most of my career as an engineer. So actually, actually building uh, impactful presentations takes more time and effort than I'd like. Uh, and just a second to come back up. So building impactful presentations takes me a lot of time and effort and frankly, design skills that I just don't have. Luckily, that's where a designer comes in. Designer lets me focus on the content of my presentation and it takes care of creating a beautiful representation of my ideas so that's in, as impactful as, on my audience as possible. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna start here on the title slide. You can see it's a little bit boring, but I have a few images that could spruce it up and I'm gonna drop them into the slide. And normally, I'd start rearranging them, cropping them, resizing them to create a layout that I was happy with, but designer is always working for me in the background. And when I add that content to the slide, it automatically pops up for me with advice on how to lay them out. And as I click through them, you'll see it's creating these beautiful designs that are featuring the content I've added to the slide. And it seems really simple because designer made it that way, but there's actually a lot of really incredible stuff going on here. Things like salient region detection, and facial recognition, and color analysis. So you'll see that even as it's cropping and resizing these images to build a beautiful layout, it understands that the hand and the quadcopter are the central point of the image, and it keeps them at the center even as it crops it, or the mobile phone and the remote control. And as it finds the darks in the electronics and the mountains, and the blues in the sky and the water, it's able to echo those in the design of the slide through color analysis. And if I go to the next slide, you'll see I have a pretty long image here with a lot going on. There are a lot of different faces. There's this guy's yellow jacket here. And it'd be really easy as Cortana's pulling out a square image from it for it to just take the center or the left side. But it's actually able to recognize the one in-focus face in that image. And as I page through the designs that Cortana's chosen for me, you can see it's making the, hate, the face the hero of that image. Now, I told you these are getting smarter, and one of the ways that designer is getting smarter is it can deal with more types of content. So not just images, but now text. As I go to the next slide, you'll see a set of development milestones. Now, designer is using natural language processing to understand that this is actually a timeline, a series of months. And it's able to create for me a beautiful representation of that timeline that really makes the milestones pop for my audience. Or I can go to this next slide, where I've got a sequence of steps, and designer recognizes that as well and lets me create a quick sequence diagram that clearly outlines the flow. And it's even able to do things like pull out the verbs from these steps and use them as a quick header. So I've seen how in a few seconds, 
I can use AI to help me create a more impactful presentation in PowerPoint. Now we're gonna switch into Word and see three more of my favorite AI-powered features already in Office. And we're gonna start with another AI-powered assistant, Editor. Now, Editor goes way beyond the spelling and grammar checking that you're used to. It actually accounts, it actually takes into account machine learning, natural language processing, and extensive and ongoing input from human linguists to actually make me a better writer. If I scroll down in this document, you'll see a bunch of examples of gold dotted underlines. And if I drill into them, you'll see that editor can catch everything from overused cliches like think outside the box, to jargon like headhunting, and even potential bias like young blood. And for each of these, it not only detects the problem, but it suggests a solution, like maybe using new people instead of young blood. And if I'm interested in learning more about that recommendation, I can drill in to see more and get a lot of detail about its recommendation as well as other examples. And I can customize the way that editor works. So if I really feel like I wanna hold on to my uh, vague adjectives and my Oxford commas, I can do that in order to preserve my personal style. Now we've seen a couple of examples of how AI is helping me create better work, but AI can also help me work more naturally along the way. One thing we see people do a lot of is print off documents like these and then take a pen and write comments in the margin or mark them up with edits. And this sounds kind of silly, but it sort of makes sense. It feels really natural to use a pen, and recent research has shown us that actually using a pen activates your brain more deeply than using a mouse and keyboard, especially when absorbing information. But with AI and ink editor in Word, we can actually make using a digital pen and ink feel as natural as paper, just without all the printing and scanning. So I can do things like choose a red pen, and of course I can write in the margin, But this pen is actually better than a real pen in that I can make edits with it, like striking through this sentence, and those edits are automatically affected in the document. I can even go and change to a highlighter. An ink editor understands that I no longer want to strike something out, but add emphasis to it. And I can use gestures like a circle or a scribble. An ink editor understands exactly what I intended. So now I've done my editing. I actually want to add a little bit more content to this document. You'll see I need to go get a project milestone table and a forecast chart, and I know that these are things my colleagues were working on in other documents. So normally what I do here is I'd leave Word, I'd go into another tool like Outlook or OneDrive or SharePoint to go and search for that information. Uh, once I finally found the document, I would go drill through it and find the table that I needed or the chart I was looking for. I'd copy that out, I'd come back to Word and I'd insert it. That would really break up the flow of my work. But with a new AI-powered feature in Word called Tap, I can directly within the flow of my work and the tool I'm already using take advantage of all of my organization's knowledge in order to find the right content. You'll see that I can do things now like uh, filter down to specific content types. So I'm looking for this milestone table, I can choose tables. And the first thing that comes up or on the first list that come up is this Fabricam case study where I know the project milestones are. And when I drill in, you'll see that it's not the entire document. It's actually breaking down the specific elements that I might want to reuse. And here I see that project milestone table that I can add to my document with a single tap. And because it's still a full featured table, I can style it to look good in this particular document. Now this cash flow forecast chart didn't show up as one of the top items. But well, that's okay, because TAP is actually tied into personalized search powered by OneDrive and SharePoint. So that when I type in forecast, I'm gonna get results that I have access to and ones that are most meaningful and relevant to me. So you'll see that the cash flow forecast is actually the top item here. I can drill in and again find that chart, add it to my document. And because it's a full feature chart inside a Word, I can do things like add a trend line, again, without having to leave the flow of my work. So now I've shown you my four favorite AI-powered features already in Office, I'm gonna to switch to what's coming next. And we're actually gonna start inside of Excel. Now if there's one thing we've learned from our work in AI, it's that data is an incredibly valuable resource. And with hundreds of millions of people using Excel, there is a lot of data in Excel spreadsheets. And a lot of the data looks like this. It's a simple table, but there's a lot of columns, teams, category, type, line items. 
And I don't, looking at it, get a sense of how this data works. What are the trends? What are the ways that these different categories and columns affect the values? And I could, of course, use all the tools in Excel to go create charts and pivot tables to analyze it in a lot of different ways, but that would take me a lot of time, even as an Excel expert. But with Insights, which is coming to Office Insiders this month, I have an AI-powered assistant that will do all that legwork for me. So I can run Insights on this particular data set and really quickly get a sense of how it works. I can see things like spend increases over time, I can see that if I break down this data by type, payroll has a significantly higher spend than anything else. And if I drill into more insights, I can see deeper things. Like if I isolate just stock compensation, I can see a really significant outlier, and I might want to drill into that further. So I'm going to hit Insert Chart, and Insights will actually automatically create a pivot table for me in Excel tied to this data showing me this exact insight. I can mouse over here, and I can see the outlier occurred on September 2013, but I really want to understand the source of that, so I can use Excel's functionality and pivot tables to break it down by team, and immediately I can find that the engineering team is responsible for that outlier, and I can go and investigate further. So in just a few seconds, I was able to understand this data set and find a few key insights that I may want to investigate further. All right, now we're gonna switch gears to things that are truly bleeding edge, and in fact, so bleeding edge that I'm gonna to connect to a devs machine in Dublin in order to show it to you. Uh, earlier we saw how in TAP, uh, I can use organizational knowledge in order to more quickly access what I need and incorporate it into my own work. Now we're gonna see how Word Online can connect to that in order to help you understand your company better. That organizational knowledge can be a barrier in addition to a help. Uh, I know at companies like Microsoft, like probably every large company, it can sometimes feel like we have our own language, especially when it comes to acronyms. When you move teams or work with different groups, it can be a barrier to understanding. And we're now co connecting Word Online deeply with the Microsoft Graph and the work knowledge that it has, so that when I open a document like this, Word Online can use that knowledge, pulling from the emails that I have access to and the documents I have access to, to automatically identify acronyms in the document, and then within the tool I'm already using, identify them for me. So I can see AINR means artificial intelligence and research, and that it was found from my email. Or I can see things like NPS means net promoter score, and it's found it from files that I have access to in my organization. And if I have one of these that I still don't quite understand, I see BPO means business planning and operations, but what exactly is that? I can even see exactly the source of the information and get an expert excerpt to understand that business planning and operations is actually a team at Microsoft. All right, so now I'm gonna show you my last two demos and they're both in Outlook. Uh, Outlook and recent features inside of Outlook like Focus Inbox has done a lot of work to help me spend less time managing my inbox and more time focusing on what matters to me. And soon, Outlook is gonna show me, Outlook is gonna help me do that within an email. If I open up this email here, You'll see it's got a lot of text, but we're actually gonna use natural language processing to identify the action items in this text automatically. Open up the email. So I've got a quick video that I can show you on this one instead. Like I told you, this is bleeding edge stuff that's coming soon. Oh, there we go, it actually popped in. So you can see that as I'm looking through this email, we're using natural language processing on the email to identify the action items in it automatically. So you can see the underlines under, did you see the update the partner sent us? And if I mouse over one of these action items, you can see it's providing suggested responses. And these aren't canned responses. It's not just yes, no, maybe. It said, did you see the update the partner sent us? And the responses are things like, yeah, I saw it, or no, what was it? So it's tailored to the specific action item. And when I say, no, what was it? Outlook automatically creates a reply, it quotes that action item, and it inserts my reply directly in line. And I can do that throughout the entire email, responding to each of these action items, so I can really quickly make sure I'm covering all the action items and respond to them even on the go. The last feature I wanna show you is in Outlook Mobile. And I have a feeling that this feature was built exactly for me. Anybody who works with you will tell me that I am a perpetually late person. I have a tendency to schedule meetings back to back. I don't really take into account how much time it will take me to travel between them. 
And it often happens that by the time the Outlook reminder shows up to tell me I need to be there in 15 minutes, it is gonna take me way too long to get across town. Luckily, Outlook and Cortana will soon solve that problem for me. You can see that Cortana is giving me a notification that I need to be, leave by 5.05 to arrive on time for dinner with friends. And it's telling me it's gonna take me 24 minutes to get to the lake house based on my current location and my current traffic conditions. So I know I'm not late. And I can even force touch into that notification so I can see a route to the destination that I'm going to and deep link into my favorite mapping applications to get directions. So that was a quick lap around all of the AI-infused features in Office, but really, that's just a drop in the bucket. We've been hard at work adding AI to Office for years, and there are literally dozens of features that are AI-powered. You'll see things like Quick Starter and Researcher. Uh, you'll see things like My Analytics, Ink to Math, Ink to Shape, one of my favorites, uh, Math Assistant. If you come over to the booth, we'll tell you all about the full story of Office and AI. So thank you very much.